He's a native New Yorker and an FIT graduate. He started his career at Brooks Brothers, and that was where he met Ralph Lauren, who was also uh, a beginner in his career. And uh, this led to a friendship uh, which really launched Polo. And the two of them left uh, Brooks Brothers, if I'm correct, and they started Polo. Uh, but uh, after a short period, uh, uh, Mr. Barato felt he wanted to go on his own. And uh, after he went on his own, he was offered a wonderful uh, opportunity to join Brioni, which is the Tailor of Kings. And the name Brioni is very special, which I won't tell you about. I asked Mr. Barato to talk to you about that. And uh, he did a, a fantastic job at Brioni for several years. And you know that Brioni was the tailor chosen to make the clothes for 007 James Bond. And uh, so on and so forth. So I'm not going to say anything else, and I want Mr. Barada to take the podium. He's going to show you a, uh, a, a, a film on uh, Ralph Lauren also. So you have both. Mr. Barado, please. Thank you very much. We're going to run this tape first, and then I'll continue. Did he heard you? There it is. Okay, great. like sports. I wanted to be Joe DiMaggio when I was a kid, and then I wanted to be a movie star. I never knew I was going to become a designer. I didn't even know what a designer was. Right after I got out of the Army, went to work for a company called Brooks Brothers, and then went on to work for a tie company. I watched the ties being made, and then I said, well, why don't we do this, and why don't we do that, why don't we make the tie wider? My boss at the time said, Ralph, the world isn't ready for you. So I left this company and persuaded another company to let me design ties, and I started out of a drawer in the Empire State Building. I made these ties by going to the factory and watching them made and finding fabrics all over the place. I'd take a tablecloth and make a tie out of a tablecloth. I just used anything that was in sight that I thought could be molded into a tie. I learned as I went along and work with enough professional sewers and makers of products to be able to express what I wanted to say and for them to interpret it. Polo had a sensibility that was sporty and international and it represented the kind of clothes that I liked. It was tweedy, it was sophisticated, it was stylish. A name that I believed in and a imagery that represented what the clothes were going to be like. I never wanted to be in fashion, because if you're in fashion, you're going to be out of fashion. I like things that I want. There's a certain sort of wear to them that has a sensibility to me that I like. It's like an old saddle. The utility, the things you wear to work in, the things that have a sort of honesty. So for me, dressing has always been an adventure of depending on what I'm going to do for the day and you take on the role. If you ask Ernest Hemingway what his 
role was, you know by looking at his clothes, he took on the role of the rugged writer, the elephant hunter. He took on that role and became the man he wanted to be. And that expression came out not only in his books, but in his personal style. I never loved fashion for fashion's sake. I always loved watching a character, and they inspired me. Audrey Hepburn had personal style, and she made ordinary things look great because of her own sense of style. So style has nothing to do with fashion, it has to do with the individual. I always thought that women that would wear men's clothes, they had a sexiness. Tailored clothes for women were very rare. I used to go with my wife. She would buy boys' jackets and wear tweed hacking jackets. I thought she looked great, so that was one of my inspirations. Living in New York City, traveling around the world, you feel the vibrations, and if you are tuned in, you sort of develop an ear or a feel for the clothes that you think you're going to do the next season. Fashion is about change, it's about youth, it's about inspiration, it's about what's going on in the world. It's a blend of all the things that are happening, coming from many different directions. You've got to be tuned in all the time. The way I do collections and what inspires me is the story or a theme that gets to me that says, I know how to build this. I don't build a collection from a sleeve or from a specific fabric. I build it out of a dream. Every time I design clothes, I make it a movie. And having an inspiration where I've given all my feelings out in terms of my clothes, and I feel like I write through my clothes. Advertising is the only vehicle you can have that can take it from your mind out to the consumer. Trying to say what you want to say in a straight line is very important. I want to tell a story, and I think my clothes, as I design them and as I advertise them, they're about movies. I pick the star of the movie, and she or he expresses what I have to say, and they are the real stars. And I've picked models that have certain sensibilities over the years that I felt were very much the voice that I felt was in my head. If you watch a movie and saw a character wearing something, you say, I want to I want to be him, I want to wear that. So it wasn't the clothes per se, it was the personalities and the images that I related to. They're never about that jacket. They're about that man. They're about you, the consumer, looking at that man and wanting to have that and why you want it. Why do you want to be that guy? What is he saying to you? I design into dreams what people dream they'd like to look like, what they want to feel like, and what it says to them. And I think I've always had the pulse about how to express my sensibility to the consumer. Because I am the consumer. When I built my mansion on Madison Avenue, I was taking you into a world. It wasn't just a store. I was taking you into a home. I was giving you all the mood and the atmosphere. To me, that's exciting. I always felt retail was the answer to our business because as much as a merchant loves what you do, they're not the same team. I have a team that really gets it. When you design the clothes, you have a vision. You know exactly what you want to say. If you don't watch that and carry it through, what you want to say doesn't always happen. We're all over the world, and we have to make sure that our statement gets, gets across. What happens when you have your own retail is you carry your message right to the consumer. It's as if I'm speaking right to the consumer. And that's the best thing you can possibly do. Understanding the consumer, understanding where you are, 
how to get them to understand your message. That's the business of being global. When I started out, the ties, I went from ties to shirts, to sweaters, to jackets, to men's, to women's, to home, to retail stores, to advertising, now to the internet. Today, it is the largest store we have, and it's spreading the brand and showing the brand in a way that you could never show it in advertising. You can show your whole company visually on the internet. The internet is where I can express not only my designs, but my thoughts. It makes my role much more intimate with the consumer. What makes this company interesting is that we are making profits. We are doing the right fashion. We are on Wall Street as one of the most admired companies today. I'm very proud of where we are. I feel we have a great company. I'm here because I love what I do. I love this company. And I am faced with a lot of issues. We're a public company. We have to perform. The success of this company has been we have been focused on the consumer, that we know who we are. We know how to advertise, we know how to develop product, and we've done that well. I've always vowed that I would do what I believed in and try to just keep creating and doing it with as much integrity as I possibly can. And today I'm wearing a pink pony shirt by Polo Ralph Lauren, and a, pro a portion of the proceeds from Pink Pony Productions help support cancer care and prevention. As a company that is successful, Maybe there are things we can do to help others. And I think it is a very important thing to do. I think it sets an example for the rest of the world, the rest of the business community, and part of the heritage of what I would love this company to stand for. Not only beautiful products, not only good taste, but a company that, that thinks of the world and tries to do something that it can do. It's like a school. People that come to the school, they learn. Some graduate and leave, and some stay forever. I try to make the environment really comfortable because I am comfortable with a happy environment, and I like people. This is a big company. It's an, an international company that has the right people in the right places to make the flow work, whether it be financial or whether it be retail leaders, or whether it be administrative leaders. It is a mix of talent. It's a mix of very good people that have joined together. And this is an army. It's an army of talent. And I would say that I'm the general. And the reason this company has grown is because of the talents that attract other talent. And you can't have anything if, if you haven't built a team. And I think one of the things that I feel most proud is that I built a team. I took it from myself into a, into a cast of thousands. I didn't go to fashion school, so what, what did I have? I had a passion and, and something that I felt I had inside me and I was able to express it. I enjoy the work, I enjoy building the company, and I enjoy working with people. It's really amazing for me to look at you and see all the people that are in this company. I have a wonderful family at home, but I have a family here. My name is on the label, but it's all of us together that make this company. And I thank you very much. Quite a story, isn't it? I want to express my deep gratitude to Professor Alice and FIT for allowing me to speak here today. 
I think this is my 14th year as a speaker. Well, I guess I'm going to board my 14th year class here. Um, what fascinates me about this film that you just looked at is that I was there 40 years ago. Actually, 42 years ago when we first met at Brooks Brothers, Ralph Lauren and myself. And it's a dream that became his reality. And everyone sitting in this room has that same opportunity. And if you can count the amount of times Ralph said passion, it must have been over, I, I try to keep count of it, but it was at least over 10 times. And that's what it's all about, his passion for what he does. And uh, obviously he does it very, very well. Now, I'm here to speak a little bit about my career and what I've done in my career and express my experience with you so that someday you will be here speaking as I am today. Where did it all start for me? Many, many years ago, as a young boy raised in New York City, right on 19th Street and 3rd Avenue, I was a little different. I loved sports, but I look, looked at sports from a different point of view. While I was a Yankee fan, like Ralph Lauren wanted to be Joe DiMaggio, I was observing other things about great ball players, baseball uniforms. Didn't realize this until later in my life, but I was a Boston Brave fan. They don't exist anymore. I think they're now the Milwaukee Brewers, if I'm not mistaken. But why did I like the Boston Braves? Well, they were the only team in baseball that had piping on their pockets. Imagine a young, young boy looking at a baseball team and noticing piping on the pockets. And the reason I know that is that I kept a scrapbook of baseball players and the most important thing to me was the uniform. I was also a St. Louis Cardinal fan because of the wonderful bright red Cardinals across the, um, yeah, go Cardinals across the uniform. So there was a lot of things that alerted me to things that were unique. Ralph mentioned the movies. I was also a young person inspired by the movies in those days. So what I'm saying is that I'm very fortunate to have this creative buzz that was always around my mind, making me look at things from a different perspective. And I picked that up at a very, very young age. Um, and why, I don't know. I just think it's a gift. And then the gift became a couple of other things that I've developed over my career. And urge you to listen very carefully and perhaps copy what I copied to make me where I am today. For example, I just talked to you about always being alert and aware. There are so many things that go on in life, and I was one of those people picking up on that. The other thing that was very important to my career was integrity. Um, I've always respected people, and I've always conducted myself with a great sense of integrity. When you do that, you don't have to worry about covering yourself. You put yourself out there, you're honest. People respond to that, and it develops a nice character. And that's one of the things that I've been able to do in my career, quality. I've always associated myself with quality. A school, FIT, that I went to, companies that I worked for, my own personal lifestyle. And quality is more than a product that you wear or buy. It's about how you conduct yourself. 
if you think of yourself as the ultimate, the Bentley machine, for example, you know that you're out there and you're the best. And along with that comes a word called passion. Passion to me is a very, very important word because it's the thing that drives me. As I mentioned, Ralph Lauren said it many, many times in that clip, passion without the passion, you don't have the love for what you do. I think I've been in this business, I hate to tell you, 48 years. And I don't think that I've worked a day in my life. That's how much I love what I do. And I consider myself very, very fortunate to say that, and I believe that, and I mean that. I've never worked a day in my life, because what I do is my passion. And Ralph Lauren is the same way. Vision. I've always been inspired by people with great vision. When you think about a Ralph Lauren, what he's done, billion dollar company, billion dollar company, from his vision, his dream. He never lost track of his dream. That, coupled with his vision, brought him to the level where he is today. Inspiration. I'm always inspired by people. Someone just the other day was talking to me about my career. And they said, what is it about your career that sets you aside from other people? And I said, I was very fortunate to work, some for, for work, to work for some really great people. And I've always been able to take the best out of those people and leave the worst part there. It never came with me, only the best. That's how I grew. So <clears throat> those six points are some of the motivations that allowed me to get where I'm, I am today. Someone who would, who's with me today, two young people from the uh, Ralph Lauren organization, said to me, do you remember walking in this auditorium when you were a student? And I said, when I was a student here, there was two buildings. So I don't remember an auditorium. I didn't remember having the opportunity to have guest speakers speak to us in those days. But let me tell you something. In 1998, I was awarded the Alumni Star Salute Award, probably one of the most glorious experiences of my life, where they had a dinner, a black tie dinner at the United Nations. And that was because I was able to go to this school, be recognized for whatever I was able to contribute. This gets tough for me, Alice, because Alice keeps saying, you got to talk about yourself. Able to contribute to my industry and then be awarded with that wonderful award. So I stand in front of you today telling you that you have that same opportunity. Don't miss it. Passion. I'm going to go back to that word again. There are many things in life that will catch your eye, but only a few that will catch your heart. Pursue those. When I think about my career, I think about all the great opportunities that I had. Brooks Brothers meeting someone like Ralph Lauren. Joining Ralph Lauren in the beginning, I was his third employee. Coming back to him almost 35 years later, that's only three months ago. Being his 12,000 employee, or 12,000 plus. Going into my own business. And failing at my business. I lost everything, every penny that I earned with two children. Because I left Ralph Lauren to go and take my, my, what's the word I'm looking for, take my destiny in my own hands. And uh, I failed. But it was the greatest learning experience I ever had. I recovered, 
and came back 10 times stronger. I never looked back. Then from there, I went to um, a company called Bergdorf Goodman, where I got a lot of retail experience after my two stores failed. And from there, I went to a great Italian company by the name of Brioni that undoubtedly makes the best men's suit product in the world and complemented by many other great products. That was an amazing experience. 20 years I spent there, and I took a little business from about $2 million to over $60 million, only in the United States. And I did all those things with the integrity, quality, passion, vision, and inspiration that I was just talking to you about. Getting back to what I said before, where did it all start? The movies inspired me, color, obviously, uniforms. I remember being a messenger boy in New York City. I think I was about, in those days you can work, about 11 or 12 years old. And I noticed something different about me when I was a messenger boy. I was wearing a suit, shirt, and tie. Everybody else was a little more casual in those days, but I was wearing a suit, shirt, and tie, delivering messengers. And I said, that, that there's something a little unique going on here, and I just love dressing. And then I wanted to be a baseball player. Besides liking uniforms, I did want to be a baseball player. Ralph wanted to be Joe DiMaggio, I wanted to be Joe Barato, the next Joe DiMaggio. And I remember having a tryout with the Brooklyn Dodgers. In those days, they had these tryouts. And I went there, and the most amazing thing happened to me. And I followed his advice, and I still regret it to today. And that means never lose confidence in yourself. This guy looks at me after I tried out, and I'm all excited. And he's a professional baseball coach with a lot of experience. And he says to me, kid, get yourself another profession. Well, it really shattered me. I mean, the profession I went into didn't turn out to be so bad, but I was shattered. And I, I believed him, and I gave up. And it took me a couple of years to figure out that I was a decent ball player. I couldn't be a major league caliber ball player. And I recovered, but he really got me for that one moment. So all I'm trying to say is that don't believe what people tell you, believe in yourself. And that was quite an experience for me. Then I graduated from high school and was too impatient to go to college, if you can believe that. So I went to work for Brooks Brothers. And they had me uh, become, because of, I guess, my talent that I didn't realize I had, the youngest assistant to the buyer in the history of Brooks Brothers. And that's where I met Ralph Florin. And Ralph and I would sit down after work and he would talk about his vision. And my heart would start to beat every minute he spoke about what he believed. So I was, remember that dream I was telling you about, that vision I was telling you about? It was very much a part of my life and obviously his life when we were kids. And then from uh, Brooks Brothers, I decided to go to school, and I went to NYU for a while, then I finally wound up at FIT and got my degree here. And this is the school that got me going to the next level. I decided that I wanted to become something in this industry because the passion was there, and I had to fulfill that passion. And as I said before, I've been very fortunate because I feel like as if I never worked a day in my life. At Brioni, uh, as I said, in 20 years, I was able to build this magnificent business because I had a great product and I had a lot of experience. And I used that experience, my integrity, my inspiration, my passion, all these things that I developed over my career all, again, with the foundation right from the school, FIT. And I built this magnificent business. And I could have stayed at Brioni 
for the rest of my life. They loved me, I loved them, I had a great job. And lo and behold, the telephone rings one day. And he usually calls me Barato. He said, Barato? He said, what's this I hear about you retiring? I said, no, Ralph, I'm not retiring. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to retire in December, but I'm going to become a consultant. He started to laugh. He says, I want to see you. Now, this is after 35 years, but don't forget, we've been connected over the 35 years. So I go to his office. He sits down. He looks me straight in the eye. He says, you belong here. I want you here, and I want you to retire here. So the pendulum swings all the way around from us being two kids, not knowing what we were doing in those days, to him wanting me to come back home, to go back to the family. As he mentioned in the clip, um, it's a family. And I've always conducted myself with my team in all the jobs I had. No one worked for me. Everybody worked with me. It was always my family. I was always fair. And I got more back than you could ever expect. So Ralph called me. We discussed it. And we procrastinated. Well, I procrastinated for almost six months before I made the decision to come back home. It was a, a difficult decision. But I must admit, obviously, you, th you know I'm around a few years, at 48 years in this business, so I'm no youngster. But the challenge was so exciting. I was so stimulated, as I always am. The passion was in overtime. And I said, oh boy, I can't believe this. I'm going back home after 35 years. So here I am at Polo. I've only been there three months since the first time. By the way, I don't get credit for the first few years there. My vacation is like any newcomer, and my bonus is like any newcomer. So I got to start all over again. So Ralph thinks that um, I'll be there a while. Now, I'll tell you something interesting. At this company, there's just a wealth of young people, older people. My first day on a job, I met an old, old friend who I didn't realize worked there. His name is Jerry Myers. And Jerry said to me, welcome, and he gives me a big hug and a kiss. Now, I know Jerry, God knows, I don't even know how many years I know him. In fact, I didn't even know he was working. So I said, let me tell you something. The first three years were tough. No, the first two years were tough. But the next 11 have been phenomenal. And he said, I started at your age. So Jerry is 78 years old, working every day of his life and loving it. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do that. <laughs> but the passion this man has is just amazing. Uh, I'm learning to do, to, uh, to do other things, so when I retire, I just won't be sitting around. But it, it just gives you an example of the mentality of some of the people that have this kind of passion, that just love what they do. We were talking about quality before. Quality is a very important part of everyone's life. It's never an accident quality. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. And as I say, when I say quality, I'm not just talking about a great Brioni suit or a great Ralph Lauren polo shirt. There is no achievement without a goal. When I think about my career, every part of that career had a game plan. I always was thinking ahead. And my quest was to be the best. And as I mentioned before, I hope I'm not being repetitive, but I did it with integrity, quality, passion, vision, 
inspiration, and I always followed my dreams. Now, a couple of things that you have to understand. I came from a working class family, not too far from here. And I used to dream about meeting people, celebrities, I guess we call them. And this career that I'm in has afforded me that opportunity. I met the most incredible people in my life. And I have a thousand different stories to tell you. But remember the word respect before? I was involved in a movie with Richard Gere called Dr. T and His uh, Women. And Richard came up to the showroom, first time I met him. And um, we had this entire wardrobe ready for him. And we picked out certain things for this character in the movie, Dr. T. So after he finished putting on his outfit, he looked at me and he said, what do you think? And I said, Richard, the tie. I want to put a little dimple in it. Your tie's got to have a dimple. So I played with the tie, and I put the dimple in a tie. Now, this is Richard Gere. I'm Joe Barato. And he says, you, he fixed the dimple. He says, you like that? I said, yeah. I had his personal assistant photograph the dimple. And that was the end of it. I think four or five months later, I was invited to the opening of the movie, and the first scene where he's wearing a tie, bingo, dimple. So what that, what that proved to me is that he showed his respect for my craft, and that meant a lot to me. And when you all excel in your business that you're going to be going into, when people regard you that way, it really is just an amazing feeling. Learning and growing is a lesson that all things are difficult before they become easy. Look for the opportunities, work hard, keep the passion, keep your integrity, pay attention to detail, and respect people. I think I'm at the end of the road. Do I have to say anything else? I'm running out of time. Okay, this is the, I'm sorry. All right, this is very, very interesting. Thank you, I'm sorry, I forgot that. Uh, a lot of you may not know this, but Brioni is an island um, right off of Italy, up I'll use the word Yugoslavia, perhaps people might remember that a little easier. And at one point, it was an island that was owned by, it, or governed by Italy. It was part of their territory. And this island of Brioni, uh, back in the 30s, was known as the, I hate to use the word jet-setting place, but that's where, that's what it was. All the rich people and most influential people from all over the world used to go to this island and play polo. So uh, the founders of Brioni, Savini and Fanticoli, loved that island. They used to go there. And they decided to open up a company by the name of Brioni after the island. And the logo <clears throat> of this island is a gentleman on a polo horse playing polo. So, um, 1986, I joined Brioni, and the first task they're given to me is a legal issue that I've got to resolve. And what does that mean? That means that Ralph Lauren was using the polo player in Europe and didn't have the right to use it because it was owned by the Brioni family. So I had to ne negotiate with Ralph to allow him to use the polo player in Europe. But what's, what's interesting is that the sensibilities of both these founders, they all went to, like Ralph said in his clip, that 
polo, the sport, represented everything he believed in because that was the lifestyle that he wanted to go after with his, his entire concept. And I remember the day he called me on the phone. He says, Joe, Joe, he's all excited. Before it was a company, I got the name. And I asked him, what's the name? He says, Polo. I said, perfect, perfect. And you know the rest of the story. Now, this is the most exciting part for me. Questions and answers. This is the best part for me, so give me all you got, because I'm ready for you. Oh, this is disappointing. Ah, yeah. oh, thank you. Do I have a title? No, I'm, I'm president of Purple and Black Label Menswear. He could have, I could have gone back as messenger boy. It didn't matter to me. I, I love being back there. Yes. When I left Ralph, I uh, opened up. I had one great store, really doing well. Then I got a little greedy, and I opened up a second one when I shouldn't have. And within a year and a half, we closed both. We just ran out of money. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I loved it. It was my name. I had a vision for it. The, the problem was that not only did we run into bad times, but the country was going through a very difficult period. It was the first oil crisis that this country had ever experienced. On top of a war called the Yom Kippur War, and everything was just devastated, I opened my second store on Wall Street, and the market, everything just collapsed, including my business. But, you know, getting back to it being one of the greatest experiences, that's when I learned that you got to walk or crawl before you walk. And we was young, anxious, and with a little bit of luck, there's a lot of luck involved in, in our lives. With a little more luck, it could have worked. Yes? No, I'm too old. <laughs> You're never too old, but I, I've had a great career. I'm very satisfied. And I commit this to you right now in my next life. I will be a designer. That will be my brand. Yes. Oh boy, I remember the ties for sure. Then it became shirts, then it became clothing, then it became women's wear. I would say he really started to roll around 19 just let me think. He uh, started the business in 79, right? Uh, 69. I would say around 76, 78 is when it really started to roll. But I think the last 10 years has just been incredible. That's when he became public, public company. Yes. Well, women. I was going to become a Catholic priest until I discovered women. Um, <laughs> um, like I said before, color was very, um, very interesting. The baseball uniforms, details, color, the movies. And I must admit, I, I, I didn't say this before, but my dad, rest his soul, was an incredible dresser. And my uncle, his brother. So funny, this weekend I was going over pictures. And he was like, wow. So it was there in front of me. And I guess I'm sure that inspired me as well. Yes? Uh, space, I think. <laughs> Waste of space? No, I, 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 I did a little bit of everything in those days. <laughs> Management, design, merchandising. It's so long ago, I don't remember. <laughs> yes? Hmm. 
Hmm. That's a good question. My biggest inspiration today is my passion for what I do. That has never left me. Um, to give you an example, when I used to, when I worked for Brioni, I used to go to all the mills to buy peace goods. Suits, shirts, ties. And before every appointment, this is after 48 years of being in this business, my heart was still beating. I was so excited. I couldn't wait to see the line. And if I seen a zillion swatches, and if, if they even look alike, I always find something different. So I'd have to say it's really my love for what I do. And I wish that all for you as well. Is that it? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, being in a public company is very challenging. It's a lot different. The bureaucracy is, is amazing. When you're running a business like Brioni, for example, you're very much hands-on and you do everything with your team. But in, in a billion-dollar business, you have to kind of go through channels. And what I've discovered about this company and I don't know if I should say this publicly, but it's a word that I love. It's called risk adverse. And what that means basically is that I don't really think we challenge our designer enough or make his life easy in the design process. That's my biggest uh, disappointment since I've been there. Um, and don't forget, I'm going back to a method that he and I grew up on 40 years ago. That doesn't exist. It's all different today. And I sometimes think that maybe it's me, but when I see him really anguish himself in these meetings, I know I'm not wrong. But it's the process, and the process doesn't change because of this word called risk adverse. Do you, do you all know what I mean by that? When there's a risk and you're afraid to challenge, you move away. And that's why I call it risk adverse. It's like going to a psychiatrist and you know you've got a problem. You recognize it. It's right there. And you're ready to solve it, but you move away from it. Because you're afraid in some ways to challenge yourself. Well, people that work for people sometimes do that, and it's, it's not a healthy thing. So if that means anything to you, don't, don't be that way. Believe in what you believe and, and present it that way. That, that, that's a good question. You know, Ralph's success is his point of view. He never wavers. And I think that's a good thing. I mean, when you think of his contribution to society, forget about fashion. He's created a, a society of people that follow him in everything he, do, he does, including home furnishings. So there is a comfort level there for his consumer and for himself. It's not exactly what I'm talking about as far as that kind of thing goes because he's got to stay on the horse and follow that, that lead because he can't change. But there are things that he does that are just magnificent. I think what you're saying is partially true. It's a very sensitive issue and it's having self-confidence to bring that to him. That little bit of change. Just a little bit of an extension. And um, it's not just Ralph Lauren. When you deal with very creative people, um, it happens, for example, I was kind of amused today. We were in a meeting and someone kept saying, the thing to do with Ralph Lauren is don't let him see it too many times because he's always changing something. And I remember my merchandises, 
used to do the same thing to me. It, it just snapped today. Every time I'd look at something, I'd change it. And my merchandise manager would say, all right, you, you've already made your decision. And she would try to move me into the next direction. But you know, it's like that passion, you always think you're missing something. And the more you see, the more you change. It's just nature. And people like creative people do that. <laughs> so um, I don't know if I'm contradicting myself, but challenge is good sometimes. Any other questions? Yes, I'm, I'm not looking up here, I'm sorry. Well, do you, do you all do internships? I mean, that's something we used to do all the time. Yeah, um, but the thing is that um, I actually, I came from Kansas City, and I don't have much experience in this field, so internships and stuff like that is hard to get because they want experience. Well, we're always looking for talented, passionate young people. And any of you who have an inkling to get an interview, at least, with our HR people, you let Alice, uh, Professor Alice know, and I'll arrange it. Thank All right. I couldn't do that at Brioni because we only had 60 people working for us. Yes. Yes. I think I'm looking at her right now. <laughs> um, God, I've met so many. Oh, I'll tell you a great story. Uh, who's the famous uh, bride designer? Vera Wang, thank you. I'm at Brioni, telephone call to my um, PR lady. There's a secret wedding taking place. Real high profile, but you can't reveal the name. So I said, well, she comes to my office. Well, who is it? They won't let us know but we have to commit to the wedding party. And I said, um, well, you know, I want to make sure it, it complements the product. And she says, well, we can't. They won't tell us. You want to do it. So I took my chances because Vera Wang is, you know, obviously a great company. Well, two weeks later, my PR lady comes in the office. She said, bingo, we're going to get involved with Kate Hudson and her husband. So, um, you know, I'm always dressing guys. You understand that, right? I mean, Brioni's mostly menswear. I never get the occasion to dress women. But this one, I said, I'm going to get involved in this one. So I go to their hotel suite, and there's Kate Hudson. And I always forget her husband's name. Huh? Yeah, hair down to his, his shoulders it was so difficult for me to fit him. And bare feet and a toe on a tattoo on every toe. And I already didn't like him. But I sure as hell loved her. And and there she is, I swear to you, sitting on a floor with a little camera, so cute, so in love with him, taking pictures of me fitting him. And that was a real treat for me because before I left I heard that her mother was in the other room. And that's the one I always liked. <laughs> Although Kate Hudson is not so bad. So I said to Kate, I said, Kate, is your mother back there? She says, yeah, mommy. <laughs> and out runs Goldie. Goldie, I mean, she's Goldie. She's first thing she said, well, what do you think of my future son-in-law? I didn't tell her the truth. <laughs> Are they still together? No. no. So I still have a chance. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. This has been a treat.